Could there be such a thing as antimatter stars? It's a very remote possibility, but one that's become slightly more credible because of some recent research. Antimatter, as you might guess, is made of antiparticles. So for instance, there's an anti-electron called a positron because it has a positive charge opposite to the electron's negative charge. All the known subatomic particles have corresponding antiparticles which are routinely created in high energy collisions although they survive only for fractions of a second. Atoms of antihydrogen and antihelium have also been made briefly in laboratory experiments. Despite the reality of antimatter, the universe at large seems to be made almost entirely of ordinary matter. It's one of the major puzzles of science why matter dominates antimatter in this way, because at the beginning of the universe there must have been equal amounts of each. Now a team of researchers has put forward evidence that some stars in our own galaxy may in fact be anti-stars. These scientists have sifted through 10 years of observations by the Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope. Among nearly 6,000 sources of gamma rays, the most energetic form of electromagnetic radiation examined by the telescope, they found 14 star-like points that give off gamma rays at energies corresponding to matter-antimatter annihilation. These sources don't match the profile of typical gamma ray sources such as pulsars or black holes, but they do fit the bill for objects made of antimatter that are drawing in ordinary matter from their surroundings and destroying it in a final flash of gamma rays. If anti-stars do exist, it might explain why an instrument on the International Space Station has produced some results consistent with the detection of a few anti-helium nuclei. These nuclei, if they are made of antimatter, may have come from the surface of anti-stars. If all 14 candidate anti-stars in this latest study turn out to be made of antimatter, how many anti-stars does this suggest that the galaxy contains? If they were concentrated in the plane of the Milky Way, it might be as few as one anti-star for every 400,000 normal stars. But if anti-stars also exist outside the plane of the galaxy, where they'd be much harder to find because there's less surrounding matter for them to annihilate, there could be as many as one anti-star for every 10 normal stars. The trouble is, proving that an object is an anti-star is incredibly difficult because in every way other than the matter-antimatter annihilation signal, which doesn't have to involve anti-stars, they'd look exactly like ordinary stars. Astronomers would have to work by a process of elimination, gradually ruling out the possibility that it might be some other stellar gamma ray source, such as a neutron star or black hole. Even if anti-stars prove to be real, and it's a very big if, they'd almost certainly account for only a small fraction of the universe's missing antimatter. Cosmologists would still be faced with the problem of explaining why matter is so dominant. <laughs>